Hey everyone, if you've been using Goose, you know how great it is at doing some work for you. But what if you want to take it a step further and use Goose to work on a server or in a CI CD environment or build a report while you sleep so it's ready for you to read when you start your day? If you'd like to use Goose to automate your tasks, then this video is for you. Today we're diving into a different way to use Goose, something we call headless mode. Let's take a look at how to use headless mode in our terminal and how we can set up something like a cron job to run a Goose command once in a while. The basic command structure is goose run, followed by either a dash T for text instructions where we give it the prompt on the command line, or we can use dash dash recipe if we want to provide it with a recipe that's written in its own file. So let's run this as a prompt. Write a haiku about what day of the week it is and append it in a file. Notice how specific and detailed this instruction is. That's super important for headless mode. You need to be very clear about what you want because goose can't ask you for clarification. If Goose is unsure what to do, the LLM might hallucinate or make mistakes, or it might respond to the question asking what to do, and either way, your work doesn't get completed. All right, so this says it's done. Let's go take a look at the file that it created. And there's our haiku. Next, let's set this up as a cron job so it runs every day at 8 a.m. To set up a cron job on our MacBook, we can run this command, crontab-e, and here I'm just gonna paste in the command. The first part here just tells it what time of day. So on the zeroth minute in the eighth hour, every day, every month, every day of the week, I wanna run this command. We're giving it the full path to the goose executable. We're giving it the run command and the dash T, which is the same instruction that we just gave it a moment ago. If we scroll up here to the top, we can actually see that this whole interaction got logged in this file. If we were to take a look at this file, we would see the session data of the request and all the responses from Goose and other information. Normally session files are really handy for debugging or for continuing conversations with Goose later. But if we're doing automation like a daily task or an hourly report or something, we probably don't want a new session file made every time. So we can add a flag called dash dash no session for these tasks. Let's do that in our cron job. So right after the run command here, I'm gonna add this new flag called no session. That's gonna instruct Goose not to store the information of the prompt and the response in a session file. What if I want Goose to scan some code looking for vulnerabilities and code syntax, maybe generate a report of what it finds? That's gonna be way too much to put in a single command line where we'd have to tell it which tools to use and so on. And so we can look at using a Goose recipe to help us out here. A recipe is a reusable template that defines exactly what Goose should do and maybe which extensions it needs to operate. We have lots of content on recipes that I've put in the video description. So I built a very simple Python Flask application here. It just serves up a hello world kind of message. And I've got a recipe here that we're gonna use to scan this. Let's take a look at what's in this file. At the very top, we've got a title and a name. We've got the author information. And for headless mode, we need to make sure that we include our prompt. In this case, it's just a very high level instruction saying do some CI CD automation and do some tests and run security scanning and so on. After this though, we have a very detailed list of instructions. And one of the things that we can see in here are some placeholders like test command and format check command. These are actually defined down here at the bottom and tell Goose exactly what command to go run. And the very last instruction here is that we're asking it for a summary report when it's finished. So let's go take a look at how to run this in our command line. In headless mode, we would say goose run no session dash dash recipe, and then we give it the name of the recipe file, in this case, codequality.yaml. Now, depending on the complexity of your recipe, it might take a few moments to analyze everything, Back here in our code editor, what we want to see at the end here is we want to see this summary report markdown file show up here in our file list. I'm going to clip the video just a little bit and skip to the good part. All of our tests passed okay. We can see the code quality passed and everything was finished there. Did some initial security scanning, everything passed there, but it found some vulnerabilities in some of the libraries that we were using. So it made some recommendations, came up with a conclusion, it even gave us a nice little footer here at the bottom that this was generated for us. So headless mode works really great in automated environments, especially in a Docker container, but there are a few extra steps that we would need to set that up. This is a Docker file that got generated for how to install and run the Python application, which port to run it on. The core thing I wanna highlight here, are these instructions in the middle that, that tell Docker how to install Goose. And we also need to copy over a working configuration. 
And so I've got a sample config YAML file here that we're gonna copy into the Docker container as well. Now this config file just simply says I wanna use Google and I wanna use one of the Gemini models. That's all that's in here. That config file doesn't have an API key set to use the Google LLM, nor should it. We don't wanna write our API key in that config file or in our Docker file for the container because we don't want some third-party software accessing our environment looking for sensitive information like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass a Google API key from my laptop's environment into the container environment for when I run Goose. The first part of our command is just our Docker run. We're telling it to run everything in this app folder, which is where we installed our application. The next part here is where I'm passing my personal Gemini key from my local laptop to an environment variable on the Docker container that we're calling Google API key. We're giving it the name of the Docker container and then here's our goose headless mode command, goose run, no session, recipe, and we give it the name of our recipe file. Now for other automations like CICD pipelines, you can integrate goose directly into your workflow with shorter instructions, but we can also tell it to use the developer plugin like this so that it can read and write files for us. Here's an example of how we could do this in something like GitHub Actions. So to wrap up, here's some key tips for success using goose in headless mode. First, Always be very specific in your instructions. Vague instructions may lead to unpredictable results. Second, set up your environment variables properly. Goose has a lot of great environment settings to let it control how it can summarize the response context or tell it how many back and forth turns Goose can take to interact with your LLM to get its work done. I'll add links to that in the description below. Third, always test your headless commands in a safe environment first. Since there's no human interaction, you wanna make sure they do exactly what you expect. And finally, implement proper error handling in your automation scripts. Check exit codes and have instructions for Goose on how to handle those errors gracefully. And that's a quick intro to the headless mode of Goose. It's an incredibly powerful way to automate your development workflows. Whether you're running it in CICD pipelines, Docker containers, or scheduled tasks like cron, Headless mode lets you harness Goose's AI capabilities without any human intervention. The key is to start simple, be very specific with your instructions, and gradually build up more complex automation as you get comfortable with how it works. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to automate with Goose. Check out our Discord community for more tips and discussions, or to ask questions if you need help. Thanks for watching.